In this video, I'm going to talk tactical handcuffing and tell you a story about a time I put handcuffs on a combative inmate all by myself. <sighs> no, I'm not. Today I want to talk to the new boots, or to the people looking to get into the correctional profession. In this lesson, this vlog, I'm going to break down rounds. I'm going to walk through a walkthrough, and discuss what I do, and what I don't do. Yeah, yeah, alright, yeah, hey, yeah, uh, Ooh. yeah. Before I dive into this topic, I want to take a second to thank you guys for the comments and the compliments on the videos and the books and the podcasts. I really appreciate each and every one of you and your unwavering support. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. I feel like a lot of officers miss an opportunity to communicate, to connect, to get to know the population by performing piss poor rounds. Not long ago, I watched this kid, sorry, this young man, walk into a unit with his hands jammed in his pockets. He strolled through the closed day rooms and stood at the mouth of the bays, stopping for only a second or two before moving on. It was strange. There were no words exchanged. He didn't even pretend to penetrate the bays. Just the old in and out if you know what I'm talking about. His round lasted all of two minutes. Two minutes! My friends, if this is how you were doing your rounds, you're doing them wrong. Sure, on the surface, in the policy, the purpose of conducting a round is to count. To make sure the inmates are breathing and not beating on each other. But rounds are so much more important than that. Rounds are how you establish yourself inside the unit. How you set the tone. The quality of your round can dictate how your day is going to go. So let's take this scenario, this kid that I mentioned that is apparently afraid to mingle, to interact with the inmates. Let's look at what he did wrong and what he could do better. Well, for starters, how about you never interact with the inmate populations with your hands jammed deep in your pockets? It seems simple, but I see it all the time. Remember that you work with a population of people that may take a cheap shot, that may try to blindside you, that may want to serve you up a two-piece to the face. And if your hands are in your pockets, there is no way that you're going to be able to defend yourself. So don't do that. Okay, now that that is out of the way, look, I love doing rounds. You can ask around. I see it as an opportunity to interject myself, to introduce myself, to infiltrate, if you will. So when I walk in, I'm prepared to talk, to chat, to have a handful of back and forth. <gasps> Are you suggesting that we communicate with the inmate population? Yeah! Talking and engaging with the inmates during your rounds does a couple of different things. Number one, it shows them that you're approachable available and it shows them that you're not afraid to engage but if you're standoffish you can appear timid weak and unwilling to do what you're supposed to do look the first level of force in our continuum is officer presence right do you feel like an officer with his hands stuffed into his pockets afraid to speak to the inmate population is making his presence known do you feel like his presence was a deterrent to any criminal activity no it wasn't if you're going to do a round like that don't! You might as well just go back to the office and kick your feet up on the desk right next to the disinterested supervisor that should have retired three years ago! Secondly, doing rounds allows you to set the tone, to gauge the temperature of the unit, and to react accordingly. See, I'd like to know what happened on the previous shifts from both the officer's perspective and the inmate's perspective. And if I find that there is an unanswered question or some remaining disdain, I want to address it. So I listen, really listen, and then I give a real reply. I try to offer something a little more substantial than ride a kite or ask the officer on the next shift. I field complaints, and I try to offer explanations if appropriate. But I mainly listen. Sometimes listening is all that's needed to defuse or de-escalate. I also want to know what my people, the population, is talking about. Females, drug sales, Cars that they are trying to convince the other convicts that they actually have? Basketball? The Bible? The place to party? Or the Illuminati? If I'm walking through and an inmate is reading a book, I ask him about the book. I ask for a quick synopsis or an elevator speech. And if I've read it, I talk to him about it. I find everything. 
every reason I can to chop it up because, well, <laughs> I like to talk. But more than that, it helps me to get to know my guys. And inside, knowledge is power. Leverage. And can mean the difference between compliance and violence. Another thing I like to do is create a little chart. For example, throughout my shift I would draw, I would diagram the day room and write down the names of the inmates and who they interact with. So I draw little tiny tables and write down all of the guys names that sit around and play cards together. Or I'd make a note of that one guy that always sits by himself outside of his room. This helps me memorize their names and it helps me learn their behaviors. So if they change, if they alter their routine, I will see it. I will recognize it and react accordingly. Here's an example. I have this guy sit outside of his door by his room every day. And then one day I opened the day room and he didn't come out. So I addressed it. I asked him if everything was okay. He said it was, but his behavior bothered me. So I looked around and I noticed that my day room was segregated, separated by race. So I made extra rounds. I spent the whole shift wandering around interacting and guess what right after dinner the whole mod exploded into an all-out brawl <laughs> I'm, I'm no i'm kidding i'm kidding nothing happened and maybe nothing was ever gonna happen or maybe because i was observant because i knew my guys maybe because i made some extra rounds i prevented a pummeling so start looking at rounds as an opportunity and not an obligation because treating them as such will make for a smoother and safer shift if you like this video, if you found value in this video, straight punch that little like icon. Leave a comment and share this content with anyone and everyone that you think may be interested. Subscribe and click the bell so you're notified every time I release a video. And if you're looking for more correctional content, head on over to my Facebook page. I'll post the link in the description below so you know where to go. And if you're looking for even more correctional content, check out my book, the nothing that never happened, available on Amazon. All right, guys, that's all I got. Until next time, be smart, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll talk soon. Let's go.